Hello and welcome back to Dominion Plunder Full Set First Impressions. Um, when I last left off, I was talking about Cutthroat before the client kicked me out. Um, and also I couldn't remember the name of Berserker, and it turns out it is in Hinterlands, so I just want, wanted to uh, <laughs> clarify that for... Uh, all the zero people who were watching and didn't <laughs> didn't know what I was talking about. Anyway, um, so moving on. Next up, we have enlarge five cost action duration. Now and at the start of your next turn, trash a card from your hand and gain one, costing up to two more. Okay, so this is a remodel variant. Um, kind of awkward um the start of uh your next turn part for this kind of effect is you know often not really what you want because you don't necessarily have uh, the right card in hand that you actually want to play this on and uh so not only do you not have a choice about it but it also doesn't go into your hand like it would with say transmogrify um so I I mean I think you probably end up playing with this, you know, in a lot of the situations where you would be playing with remodel just because you know it's a it's a nice effect, it's good at trashing estates. Um but you know that I I do think the duration effect like I think this is um it's not clear to me that this would be better than remodel if it costed four. I think it might actually be worse. Um, maybe not, because early in the game, you know, just seeing, effectively seeing it more often, you know, having it played more often, like, might just be worth it regardless. Although, there's a lot of times when you don't really want to remodel coppers, and this card will kind of force you to do that. Um, you know, you might end up having to just, like, turn coppers into estates and then turn the estates into something else later, which isn't isn't necessarily terrible, but is often slower than what you would like to be doing. And in particular, if you have the duration effect and it, you're essentially forced to trash your copper and now you can't hit a price point that you wanted to hit, that could be pretty annoying. Um, I mean, in, in some ways, you know, if you draw a remodel of the hand with that doesn't have any estates like you can get the same result by virtue of the fact that the remodel is itself taking up uh space in your hand so you know that's it's maybe not at, so bad as as it might seem um but still i um i mean I'm, I'm definitely focusing more on the downside than on the upside and it is like there's probably so there's there's probably some upside here that I'm I'm overlooking just in terms of like well you don't you know it's it's doesn't cost as much draw it doesn't cost as many actions to be playing this card um, but I just feel like you know if I mean if you have duration draw or set aside stuff or whatever that you can use to set this up then that'll be that'll actually be like really good and you know um, it'll definitely be better than you know vanilla remodel at that point but. I feel like a lot of the time this is just going to be like you would rather pay the cost of the needing to draw the card and needing to use an action in order to trash the card that you actually want to trash rather than whatever happens to be in your starting hand. Um, particularly because, you know, like unlike something like Cathedral, where like Cathedral start forcing you to trash from your starting hand, or like Sailor, which isn't forcing you, but giving you the option. Um, there's, you know, you're not just thinning. So you you have to, like, like taking a copper that's in your hand and turning it into an estate that's not in your hand is generally gonna be negative value um, in the short term. So yeah. Um, We'll see how this goes, but uh, I my prediction is that it will be it'll spend a lot of time being awkward. 
All right, next up we have figurine, five cost treasure, plus two cards. You may discard an action card for plus one buy and plus one coin. Okay, um, this, is this the first treasure we've had that's just like a straight up a draw card? I think it, I think it might be. I can't think of anything else. I mean, we got the figurehead that is duration draw, but like rope is duration draw. But, uh, hmm. This is, um, you know, this is, this is definitely a good card for a money deck. Like, even if you don't have an action discard and you can't get the, the buy and the coin. Wait a minute. Oh, this isn't worth any money. Oh, okay, I take it back. <laughs> oh, I take it back. Um, yeah, whether it actually, so whether it's good for money deck is actually unclear. Um, because like, assuming you have no action cards in your money deck, which is not generally going to be the case. It almost never is going to be the case, but just for the sake of argument. Um, and so you're definitely not getting the coin in the buy. Uh, five cost moat, I mean, non-terminal moat. So it's more like a, it's more like buying a lab at that point. Um, and lab is not a particularly strong card in money. I mean, maybe you do buy it over silver, but it's not exciting. Um, in, you know, as you get closer and closer to drawing deck, obviously if you draw a deck before you play this card, then the draw doesn't do anything and then that's really not good. Um, so the situation in which this card is gonna be at its best is when you are discarding an action card, except that well, presumably you would generally prefer to play your actions. There are obviously exceptions to that, right? Necropolis, you might not care if you're discarding a necropolis. You might not care if uh, you've got some ruins, you discard the ruins, and that's like totally fine. Um, if you've got like a village green or something that you can hold on to and then use this to discard, you play it for next turn. But honestly, even if you're in the village green case, like what deck are you building where you're like, gonna be drawing village greens or rather you're gonna have village greens in hand with this card but you're gonna be actually getting value out of the draw from this card like i don't know this like it's uh i don't really see this being very good at all just because the um, the bonus is not that strong uh, to begin with, and then if you're drawing deck, it's nothing. Um, I mean, I guess th there are going to be s situations where you know it's at least fine, if not good, right? Like it's it's fine with like storyteller. Um, it's potentially legitimately good with villa where you can like or cavalry where you can transition back to your action phase and utilize the draw for that but yeah i i don't know that's like pretty those situations are pretty few and far between i think um yeah i just think this is not very good i think it doesn't really work um Yeah, I think that's all I have to say about that. Uh, so we've seen First Mate, Frigate. This was one of the ones that I actually guessed the name of. Five cost action duration attack, plus three coins until the start of your next turn. Each time another player plays an action card, they discard down to four cards in hand afterwards. What? <laughs> what? Each time? What? <laughs> Oh my gosh. 
I think this is the warlord of this set. Like, not in the sense that it has the same effect or it necessarily is as strong or whatever, but just in the sense that it's, like, similarly going to warp the way that you play. Um, of course, I mean, you're going to need, if you want to get reliably, get this attack effect into play reliably, you're going to need to invest in draw, I guess. But, like, I mean, you, you play your village, you play your smithy, oops, you now you have to discard down to four. Okay, play another village, play another smithy, oops, you have to discard down to four. Like, that is absolutely brutal. I mean, there are ways around it, right? Like, you can, you can do draw to X stuff, potentially. Um, you can do, well, draw to X in the sense that, I mean, it's, it's like a draw to X where you're drawing it four, like with minion, I guess. But, you know, where you, you try to get um, non-drawing cards into play before you play your draw cards. Um, but that's not easy, right? I mean, there's no guarantee that you have those things available to you on the board. And four is n not a big hand size to work with. Um, you know, the reason that minion decks work is not because draw to four is a particularly powerful effect, but because minion has the self-synergy um, and it, because it has the attack uh, and because it's not terminal. Um, the, but, you know, in the general case, um, you're not going to necessarily have access to those tools. Yeah, this... That, that, that attack is, is brutal. Absolutely brutal. Uh, yeah, I think, I think it's just going to be... like super, this. I think this card is super strong and super game warping. Um, if you can be the one to get this in play like first and consistently potentially you'll be able to play like a normal drawing deck and like actually expand your hand size and all that um and you might just like shut your opponent down to where they they can't really respond in kind um i mean presumably they'll be able to like you know, even off a four card hand like people are going to be able to, to afford forget whatever but um you know, it's about getting it consistently into play and stuff, too. If your opponent, you know, if you've been playing one for a while and your opponent is struggling to do anything and they finally play one, your deck, you know, will potentially already be good enough that you can deal better with the attack than they can. Um, yeah, I don't know. This seems like... I'm going to have to play with it to, to get a sense for how strong of an attack that is. But it seems very strong to me. And plus three coins for an attack this strong, like, seems pretty good, too. I mean, not... Like, the plus two cards on Warlord is probably just better, but also Warlord is not in Terminal. Um, but still, like, this is... Like... I feel like you would buy this for five even if it didn't have any like any bonus on it other than the attack <laughs> it's really strong <laughs> or it seems that way to me um all right well moving on to long ship five cost action duration plus two actions at the start of your next turn plus two cards uh hmm so the on play effect is pretty weak for a 5 cost. It's Necropolis, but the duration effect is Denimson, um, which is pretty strong, although it's not gained to your hand. Um, you know, it's Worf without the buy, which, again, still pretty strong. Not as strong. Um, definitely a weaker card than Worf, like, no question. Although it does have some synergy with Worf, I guess you could say. Um, Yeah, I mean, as as your primary village, this is going to be quite awkward because, like, half the time it's this necropolis, which is giving you actions, but it's doing it pretty inefficiently. Um, and then half the time it's a duration draw card, and you, so it's not even available to give you those actions. Um, which, I mean, the duration draw might help offset that by virtue of being... Because it's not in terminal. 
duration draw. Um, but yeah, I think uh, the question for me basically comes down to like a how often are you going to how often is it going to be worth getting this for the village effect even though the village effect part of it is weak. Like, sometimes you just need you know to play with shanty town or whatever. Um, that's that's part of it. Um, and then the other question is is the duration draw strong enough that it's worth investing in this even even if the village effect isn't like super relevant even though there's an alternative source of plus actions um you know how often would you buy den of sin if you didn't if it didn't go straight into your hand certainly significantly less often yeah i think Overall, I'm, I'm inclined to say that this card is on the weak side, but I'm not super confident about that. Uh, like it feels like it has to be worse than the Den of Sin. Uh, Den of Sin's a good card, though. It's definitely worse than Worf. But, again, I mean, Worf is an amazing card. But yeah, I think, I think it may maybe like an like a weak card not just a worse than done and sin card but uh even at that i mean sometimes you're gonna play with it because that's you know you gotta buy that five five dollar necropolis all right um next up we have long nope that was the one we just looked at just kidding um pilgrim Five cost action plus four cards. Put a card from your hand onto your deck. Okay, so a pretty simple Smithy variant. It's this is the the uh, courtyard of Smithies, right? So courtyard plus three cards. Put a card onto your from your hand onto your deck. This and plus four cards do the same thing. So courtyard is uh, the remote variant, and this is a Smithy variant. Um, it is. Uh, courtyard as a draw card, I would say, is like noticeably better than moat. Um, just being able to see, I mean, it, it, it matters. The more of them you play, the less it matters um, because you've been top decking a card and so you're not really increasing your search space. But that first courtyard that you play. Um, because it increases your search space relative to mode, even if it doesn't actually increase your hand size by anymore, like it makes a pretty big difference in terms of being able to find when you need to continue your turn. Or conversely, if you're not going to have that opportunity, you can top deck a card like a good action card that you can't play this turn, you know, and essentially save it for next turn. Um, so this card is going to have all the same those same kind of benefits relative to like just a vanilla plus three cards. Um, so I don't think by any means it's going to be one of the strongest Smithy variants because, you know, it doesn't have an attack on it. It doesn't have plus buy on it. Um, it's not a payload card. Uh, you know, so I'm talking about, you know, things like, you know, Barge, Margrave, Wild Hunt. Um, but, but I think, you know, I think it will, like, it'll be, it'll still be pretty good, um, what does it compare favorably to? Like, it's got to be better than Rabble, I would think. Um, I mean, if they were both on the board, you'd probably want at least one of each. But, uh, but I think nonetheless, I think it, I think it's got to be better than Rabble. Um, Catacombs. Hmm. Of course, Catacombs has the on trash ability, which is pretty nice. Um, but is the, is the on play effect of this better than Catacombs? It, it's hard to say. What about Journeyman? Also hard to say. Hmm. I think it's, I mean, it's gotta be better than Patrol. Well, yeah. So, I mean, those comparisons don't make it sound super strong because those are, those are all like, on the weaker side of the smithy variants but 
you know, I mean, Smithy variants are always going to be at least moderately useful. So this card should be at least moderately useful. Um, I could I could definitely see this effect being better than both the Journeyman and the Catacombs effects. I'm not I'm not really sure, um, but like in theory, in theory, Journeyman should just be better than this card. Uh, but you know that you know, like given it like sort of infinite precision of naming just the right card to like find the stuff that you want but um and that, i mean that's not even strictly true because like if you're if you've only got three cards deck left in your deck or four cards left in your deck and you want to, to be top decking something this can do that and journeyman can't but um generally speaking um i think in theory journeyman should be better but in practice i wouldn't be surprised if this is actually better um and then catacombs like the it's you know probably kind of a similar thing where like in theory if you're making perfect decisions about whether to to keep or to toss it's probably better but in practice like the fact that you don't have full information about the choice that you're making means you're more likely to make a suboptimal choice whereas with this card you do um anyway but that's probably roughly where it stands power level wise um, I like the simplicity of the design. I'm actually, it's it's surpri kind of surprising that we haven't seen, you know, the Smithy version of Courtyard until now, thinking about it. Um, okay, Quartermaster, five cost action duration. At the start of each of your turns for the rest of the game, choose one. Gain a card costing up to four, setting a sight on this, or put a card from this into your hand. Huh. So this is like a, you know, it's kind of like a transport or investor or something like that. I mean, there's obviously a lot of differences, but um, in the sense that, you know, it's this two-step process to gain these cards. Um, and you can sort of trigger that process in somewhat arbitrary order, um, more comparable in that sense to transport, I suppose. Um, I mean, it, that, it seems really good to me. Like the, the rare is the board where, you know, you don't want anything costing up to four. And because this is effectively like after the, you know, you play it the one time, then it's infinitely, infinitely non-terminal, infinitely draw neutral. So like, you know, all the reasons to be like, well, I'm not going to get an armory or an ironworks just against silvers or whatever. Like, but with this card, it's fine. Like, go ahead, <laughs> do it. It's like, why not? Like, I mean, sure, like, you might only want two silvers and then you might just spend the rest of the game stacking silvers up to high heaven. <laughs> but, like, who cares? You can even just take some estates. You can treat it like Way of the Worm, like, for free, right? Like, there's like no real downside to it um you just take exactly what you need you know and otherwise you pile stuff up i mean i guess you could say it's kind of slow in the sense that you you um you can't gain a card every turn right like a a, a, a proper workshop if you will um will enable you if you have enough draw to enough actions to gain a card every single turn and this will not let you do that. Um, but, like, while, I, while that will make this card worse at certain types of things that workshops are good at, like, you know, pileouts, um, it's, I mean, I think it's going to make up for it in, the like, its other utility. Like, that, like the, the fact that it's, you know, permanently out of the way, the fact that you can sort of stack up as much stuff as you want um, without having to, you know, like, to, to worry about, like, oh, like, do I have room for this in my deck? Like, you can just decide that later, <laughs> right? 
Um, yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I, by no means do I think this is like, oh, this is like the most amazing card ever, but I think it's cool, I guess. It's, um, it's a really neat concept, and I think it will be very generally useful, even if it isn't like, you know, game-breakingly powerful. It's like a card that you will often want a copy of, even if it isn't like the most important thing that you gained that game, or the second most important thing that you gained that game, but it'll still be like, yeah, you know, that was nice to have, that was useful. Um, yeah, really cool card, I like it. Silver mine, five cost treasure, gain a treasure costing less than this to your hand. Mm, yeah, well, I can see why it's called silver mine. <laughs> Um, so it is a non-terminal workshop, um, though it only gains treasures. There, there are situations where this could be really useful, right? Like you, you want to feed your, uh, like your scrap or your salvager or whatever, like you need, you just need any form of gains. Like please just find a way to get me extra cards. And you, you know, you can do convert that. You can convert those cards to plus buy and coins or whatever. Um, that's like that's the main advantage I'm seeing to it. I mean, like on a keep board, it'll be very nice. A board with like uh, conquest, phaedum, maybe triumph maybe um but a lot of times like a card that's like a dedicated silver gainer is just not very exciting uh not really doing enough to move the needle to be, make it worth buying um i mean in a money deck you're obviously going to buy this over silver because every time you play it you get that silver that you would have bought anyway or like the first time you play it, you get the silver you would have bought anyway and then you get more hooray so like it's it's never worth less than a, a silver unless you want it to be um so in that sense it's you know like obviously better than buying a silver directly if you're buying money so like okay sure um but that's again that's still not not all too terribly exciting um you know, I mean, I could see going for this if you have um, if you have some like cheap specialty treasure that you want a lot of. Like supplies would be an obvious example. Like yeah, I'm happy to spam those. Um, offhand, I'm not really sure what else would qualify. Rope, I guess. I mean, would be fine to spam. But yeah, I feel like this is, I mean, sometimes you just need anything that can ramp your payload. And, okay, like, you know, limited buys, whatever. Like, this is the gainer that we've got, so this is the gainer that we'll use. Um, but I feel like a lot of the time, you know, it's going to be, uh, this card is going to be pretty ignorable. Um, and that it's, like, most effective use cases probably gonna be trash for benefit there just aren't enough relevant specialty treasures like even after this set is, has come out i don't think there's so many of them that cost less than five um abundance having a bunch of abundances is pretty nice i think uh yeah you're not gonna gain like a bunch of crucibles cage you're not gonna gain a bunch of cages Gondola, meh. Uh, jeweled egg, meh. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't. I don't see this card doing a whole lot. All right, trickster. Five cost attack. Each other player gains a curse. Once this turn, when you discard a treasure from play, you may set it aside and put it in your hand at end of turn. It seems like thematically this is another like mountebank, you know, like shell game type of deal. Um, hmm. 
Hmm. So, I mean, it's a cursor. Um, the the on play effect is other than the curse. I mean, like the the the, the self benefit is not strong early by any means. Um, setting aside a copper, putting it into your hand. I mean, maybe a silver if you, you know. Well, I mean, if you're opening this, you're not gonna have a silver, but. You know, if you're getting it on turn three or four, then on turn five or six, you might have a silver that you collide with this, and that would be what well, that would be better, um, obviously. But yeah, setting aside a copper, I mean, it's not it's not bad, but it's it's like it certainly does not compare favorably to a lot of the upsides that other five cost witches offer. Um, you know, like what you know sea witch and and regular witch do or old witch does in terms of drawing cards um so i mean one one question to ask in general could be like would you buy witch if it didn't if it just said each other player gains a curse for five well sea hag suggests the answer is no um so then, I mean, not that Sea Hag was never purchased, but it was, you know, generally considered weak, and it top decks the curse. It's just generally going to be worse than just giving out a curse. Um, so then, if you say the answer to that question is no, then the question is the follow up question is uh, okay, how good is this uh, self benefit portion? Is that enough to take it from a no to a yes? Um, it's sort of like, you know, duration draw one. Um, you don't need to bleed this card out, which is nice. Um, but yeah, like getting the caravan effect kind of, I mean, arguably better, arguably worse, depending on the situation. Um, I'm, I'm leaning towards its on the weak side. I mean, you do get to play the treasure, so compared to, like, save, like, you don't have to you have to purchase save, and you don't have to leave the card in your hand. On the other hand, you have to have this card taking up space in your hand. And you have to use up terminal space. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm leaning towards this is pretty weak as cursors go. Um, probably, probably the weakest five cost cursor. Well, no, because... With sorcerer and sorceress, you have to get into the whole like, okay, considering these are like you know, further down in the rotating split piles, like, and I mean, sorcerer, even if it wasn't, is pretty awkward anyway. Um, but yeah, putting those aside, I think this is gonna be pretty weak as cursors go. Um, oh, maybe it's. Maybe it's better than Soothsayer. Hmm. Not sure about that one. But yeah, um, there are going to be situations where the uh, the the, uh, the beneficial part, the non-attack part, are, is really powerful, right? Like if you have Fortune, or you want to kick off with Crown, or um, you just want to see your counterfeit repeatedly... Um, things like that like that that will be legitimately good um so i don't want to like write this off too much um but there are plenty of boards where there's no particular treasure that you care about that way so on those boards this is going to be like going to feel pretty overcosted, i think all right and we've seen Wealthy Village and Sack of Loot. We have seen all of the individual loots. We can move on to the events. We've seen Cheap and Cursed. We have not seen Faded. When shuffling, you may look through the cards and reveal Faded cards to put them on the top or bottom. When shuffling, you may look through the cards. That's kind of an odd way of saying it. I mean, I know what they mean, but I think it would be more like... Uh, I don't know 
like bef well for one thing it shouldn't be before shuffling like you can remove any number of fading cards and then after you shuffle you put them on the top or the bottom I mean obviously that's wordier but I don't know it it's not like it's not like while you're shuffling that you're doing this presumably because you're not supposed to look through the cards while you're shuffling or otherwise that kind of defeats the purpose anyway uh, whatever so how good is is it to be able to either top or bottom deck these faded cards pretty good I would say like it's like they all have like a super star chart kind of thing going right you can you can bottom deck the stop cards you can top deck the deck control like that's all that's all pretty nice um, and it it will you know push certain openings too I suspect because you know you got if you have a built-in star chart right like the if, if you're looking at a, like a duration a faded duration card and you're like oh, it'd be really nice if I saw this th turn three but not so much if I saw turn four well <laughs> problem solved so um, yeah I, I, do, I do think I do think this is a pretty nice ability I do think it will push gaining cards from that pile because of the the ability um, and, that, and that includes the bottom decking I should, I should say um, that'll be useful on payload so yeah pretty nice um, then we've got friendly at the start of your cleanup phase you may discard a friendly card to gain a friendly card oh, okay it's kind of way of the rat esque. Um, obviously, you know the treasure doesn't come into it, but like in the sense of you, know, you use one of these cards to gain a copy of itself rather than playing it for its normal effect. Um, this doesn't take an action though, nor do you need the treasure, and you're only discarding the card. So like, you know, when you play way of the rat, you have to put it into play, which means it's it's there, it's done for this turn. But with this, you just discard it. So in theory, oh wait, so the start of your cleanup phase. Okay, so you're not gonna be able to, to like villa or cavalry your way back out of this. Um, but it's still non-terminal and less draw negative than Way of the Rat. And Way of the Rat's like pretty useful. I mean, granted Way of the Rat can do gain and play and that's probably why this is, you know, in some sense cheaper um, because it can't do gain and play. So that's... That is definitely an important distinction. Uh, but still, like, if I've got... I always, I always go back to Grand Market when talking about these kinds of effects, but if I've got a Grand Market in my deck, like, it's sure a lot cheaper to gain one by just discarding the one that I have than it is to buy another one. So, yeah. Um, I think... Uh, I don't know that this is going to necessarily push you to... to like take cards from a particular pile in the first place. I mean, it might, but I think more often than that, it's going to push you to, um, like push how you use those cards. Um, so like, yeah, I mean, if you just have like a lab or something, you just like, it's hard to, it's hard for playing your lab to result in something stronger than gaining another lab, right? So you probably just don't play it and you you uh, gain it with friendly. It is worth noting, um, this says you may discard a friendly card to gain a friendly card. It doesn't say you can repeat it. It doesn't say you can discard any number, anything like that. So um, you don't need to worry about like holding on to multiples. You can just take one um, and do it. So that's it's good to know and it's it's kind of nice, honestly, like, because it, uh, you know, you don't feel like, oh man, should I, <laughs> I've got like three labs in my hand, should I just discard all of them and gain three more labs? Like, no, you should play your turn. <laughs> okay, so then we get Hasty and Inherited, which we've already seen, and then Inspiring. After playing an Inspiring card in your turn, you may play an action from your hand that you don't have a copy of in play. Okay, so this essentially turns inspiring cards into cantrips or villages depending on what they already are um that's maybe that's not even the right way to say it like if you have a if you play a term like a terminal inspiring card and then you use that to play another terminal inspiring card it's not really a cantrip because it didn't draw the card it just meant it wasn't a terminal 
So, I mean, yeah, I mean, essentially staples plus one action onto these cards, except there's some subtle differences between that. Or, like, plus one action in addition to any other actions that it might grant, I should say. Um, it is, well, I mean, again, I said there are some subtle distinctions, but there's also the not subtle one of you have to not have a copy in play. So, like, it's, you know, like, uh, like Imp. It's, it's non-terminal the way that Imp is non-terminal. Imps are very inspiring. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, that really is the comparison. Uh, now, of course, part of the reason Imp is a good card is because it draws. Um, but, you know, this isn't a card, it's a trait, so... Uh, will it make you more likely to invest in the inspiring card? Yeah, I think it will. Um, you know, being able to turn something that's terminal to semi-non-terminal or being able to turn something that's non-terminal into a semi-village or a sometimes village, those both seem like pretty big upgrades that could potentially significantly change how you evaluate a pile. Um, so I do think it will... It will uh, make piles significantly more appealing when you've got nearby when you gain a nearby card plus one by oh no the puns <laughs> um yeah okay so this is this is like turning everything into forum uh or well not everything but the whatever it is attached to yeah um well, form is definitely a card that you gain more of because of that ability, that on-gain effect. Um, granted, form is a card that fits into most decks very well. It's not the sort of thing that you're like, oh no, I have too many forms. What am I going to do? You know, it's totally fine. Um, and obviously, you know, whatever card you whatever the nearby card is might not have that same characteristic it might be like fortune teller and then you're like well how many fortune tellers do i really want but nonetheless like sometimes you're like i've got 13 coins and i got one buy so i'm gonna like, buy four in a province and like nearby is gonna like potentially set you up for stuff like that so i don't think it's super um distorting the you know the form effect is is uh, it's it's you know it's there's there's definitely much more game warping traits than than that, but um, but yeah, I mean, I definitely would expect this to have a significant impact on the gain rates of its piles. All right, we've seen patient and pious. We have not seen reckless. Follow the instructions of played reckless cards twice. When discarding one from play, return it to its pile. Okay, huh, that's interesting. So it's it's kind of like Procession. Um, obviously, the, it doesn't actually trash the card, it just returns it, and it doesn't gain you a card costing exactly one more, which is a big, big difference. Also, this guy is about to smack a beehive, I just realized. <laughs> that is reckless, I, yeah, it's... Uh, very thematic. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, I think uh, th it's interesting because this requirement to return it, um, like, I'm not sure. You know, double playing and stuff is great, but then you have to return out. I'm not sure if that's going to push you to gain more of them or to gain fewer of them, honestly. I mean, it's going to depend on what the card is, of course. Um, like, to take a simple example, if you, have, if you have this on Lab, the net effect of Lab normally is uh, to increase your hand size by one. A Reckless Lab will increase your hand size by three uh, and give you an extra action, but then it'll disappear. So like, 
you know you can compare that to other one shot effects that you you know, get like ride and encampment and things like that experiment um, it's more draw than any of them it is you know the same number of actions that like experiment or sorry that uh, encampment would give you It's also five coins, which is more expensive than those other one-shot effects. Um, five coins is potentially a lot to spend on a one-shot effect like that, but it is, it is a pretty good one. Um, that's just obviously lab is just a particular example. But another thing I'm thinking about is that there may be ways around this uh, with certain cards. So, uh, the a card that doesn't either doesn't ever get discarded from play or does something when it gets started, discarded from play can get around this. So, some examples: uh, champion never gets discarded from play. It's going to be difficult to get champion with when all the other travelers are reckless, but, you know, whatever. Um, the, like, Taskmaster, if you can keep gaining fives, doesn't get discarded from play. Um, that attack, the frigate, the, right, which, like, uh, is, is it frigate? No. Um, the one that, like, only gets discarded from play after somebody gains a treasure. Like, nobody gains a treasure, it just stays out. Um, stuff like Scheme top decking should interrupt it like should move the card and then it's like oh i can't move it again it's so i think if you scheme your reckless card you will not lose it you will keep it um so that's potentially pretty good um yeah i there's probably other things but um if you can get around this then this is like fantastic but i do think like you know, travelers. I do, I do think are a good example. Well, I guess no. Wait, travelers. Travelers are fine because you do the exchange. If you want to keep like your disciple around, right? That's a problem. But when you're exchanging up the line, it's it should be fine because you do the exchange and then the the card is not is already back in its pile. So there's nothing to return. Hmm. So yeah, I guess overall, I think. Trying to solve the mini game of can I work around this uh, and not have to return it could be fun. Um, and beyond that, I I guess I expect uh, I really don't know like that I can make a general statement about oh the, the cards are either going to be weaker or they're going to be stronger like you know if they're reckless. Um, it just it feels like it's going to depend so much on the specific card. Like if you have like a, um, I don't know, a reckless chapel, that's probably worse overall. Although the fact that it gets out of your deck is nice. But like you, you'd play the chapel once and then it goes back and you're like, well, I really wanted to play the chapel twice. Um... If you have, yeah, I guess I'm mm, kind of leaning in the direction of it's more downside than upside, but but we'll see. I mean, tempo is valuable. It's not something to be ignored. All right, next we've got rich. When you gain a rich card, gain a silver. That, oh, hey, look, it's the lion. <laughs> that the, there's the emoji of. Um, Rich, yeah, rich cards I think actually like legitimately will be often often gained less often, uh, but but yeah, I mean I think there will be a significant proportion of gains where rich will suppress rather than enhance gains because you're like oh, I only want so many silvers. Um, there will definitely be other games where it's the opposite, where it's like yay I get free payload along with my whatever. Uh, but um, 
I mean, in the opening, it, buying a rich card is kind of like having played the lucky coin, right? That's going to be pretty good. Uh, so I think I think this will definitely increase the opening rate. Um, but past that, I guess I guess what I maybe the way to say it is I think this will. Um, If the gain rate, the gain rates are, are surely not actually bell curves, or if they are bell curves, they might be centered around like one or something like that. Um, but like, or I guess two for both players, something like that anyway. Um, but what I'm thinking of is, despite the fact that it's probably not a bell curve, is like it's squishing the, the curve, right? Where there's going to be fewer cases where you don't get the card at all, and there's going to be fewer cases where the card piles, and there's going to be more cases where you know you get a couple of copies at most, um, but more than zero. So that's yeah, I would think about that card. Um, we've seen shy tireless. When you discard a tireless card from your from play, set it aside and put it onto your deck at end of turn. Um, that could be. Yeah, that could be just good or bad depending on what it's on. Like if it's on, um, do you technically, I assume this is meaning it's top decking before, uh, I'm sorry, it top decking after you draw your your hand, um, right? Because if it if it was if it was before, then it would say like during cleanup or at the start of cleanup. So, um, you know, having a good card that you want to have in your starting hand on top of your deck rather than your starting five card hand could actually be um, a negative, even though it's like close to the top of your deck. It's like, yeah, but I'm not seeing it right now, and I really need that village. <laughs> um, that's, and this is not optional either. Um, you know, on the other hand, if you've got like, I don't know, you've got some villages and then, you know, you have a tireless smithy, having it in that slot might not be too bad. If, like, you, okay, you just need to find a village. You were going to need to find a village anyway, and you play the village and you draw the smithy, and there you go. Um, there's also the case where, you know, it's on your, like, terminal silver or your whatever, and you're like, uh... I don't want that, you know, at the top of my deck. Blech. Um, so this, yeah, this is another one where I think it's going to, the the effect is going to be pretty all over the place depending on the particular card, how much it's going to push you to gain the card. Um, when you, like in the opening, it's... I think it will push gains in the opening like pretty much straight up because it's almost always going to be good to be able to top deck whatever you, you know from your opening buys and be able to play it again sooner um, but beyond that uh, I could definitely see this cutting both ways and if anything would probably slightly expect it to be a negative um, after the opening specifically because of the fact that you know, it being on top of your deck but not in your opening hand is not doing much for you if you don't have some other deck control in your starting hand. And this is, if anything, potentially taking away the, the deck control that you could have in your starting hand. And then if it isn't doing that, it's top decking payload, which isn't good either. So, uh, all right, so we've got uh, events next up. So we have, we've seen Barry avoid two cost event plus one buy and the next time you shuffle this turn pick up to three cards to put into your discard pile okay so this is very is it order of astrologers order of masons one of those things i think um yeah holding cards out of your shuffle there's already some other ways to do that in this set but this one is the most direct i guess you would say um, I'm 
a little surprised that it says the next time rather than just like actively triggering a shuffle. Because you're going to have to keep track of how many times you've bought this going into when you shuffle. Um, which in some cases could be pretty annoying depending on like you know whether there's ways to return to your action phase and stuff like that. In any case, um, discarding, like, holding three cards out of your deck is definitely a strong effect. I mean, the Order of Astrologers or Masons or whatever the heck it is um, is a strong liaison. And this one, you're going to have to pay, or a strong ally, rather. Um, this one, you're going to have to pay two coins instead of paying a favor. Is that easier or harder? I mean, you get, well, it goes further. It goes 50% further because order of whatever discards two cards per favor spent this discards three um i guess i would generally say that the two coins on the one hand the two coins are easier to come by than the favor but on the other hand there's nothing competing for the favor right like whatever ally there is that's the ally and so like you're mostly the competition is mostly just like with its own scarcity not like do i want to spend it now um, not like, oh, we need these resources for something else, but oh, we might need the same resource to do the same thing, but later. This one, on the other hand, is competing for all the same resources as everything else that you're doing, um, more or less. So, um, like I said, I think, you know, on the one hand, I think it'll be easier to get to the point where, um, where you're able to take advantage of this because you don't have to accumulate the favors. But on the other hand, like uh, it's going to feel worse to have to spend the coins, if that makes sense. It's going to be easier, but it's going to feel harder, something like that. Anyway, um, but I think it's a powerful effect, and I think it's going to be something that you're going to want to do a lot. Uh, like even in the opening, like... If you have a 4-3, opening 4 and then a Void could actually be really good. Uh, it might, might well be better than like buying a 3 cost. Um, so I, like, I think it's a strong event. Um, I think it'll, be, it'll see a lot of play. Uh, next up we've got Deliver. Two cost event, plus one buy. This turn, each time you gain a card, set it aside and put it into your hand at end of turn. You only need to do this once. Wow. Okay. So. I guess the. Um, you know, this has some similarities to like traveling fair. Uh, it doesn't give you, doesn't generate buys, of course. Um, but you, know, you only need to buy traveling fair once to be able to top deck stuff. Um, and you only need to buy this once to be able to put stuff into your hand. Obviously, this is a lot worse against hand size attacks. Um, though, even then, being able to just like throw your buys into your opening hand like yeah you get attacked like whatever maybe i mean it's not good but you know if you're like oh i set aside a village and a smithy and you know a market or whatever i, I don't know like that's that's still going to be useful regardless of the fact that oh i had to discard some coppers or, or whatever um so that i could keep them like that's fine it's not good, but it's fine. Um, yeah, this is another... This seems really nice. Um, you know, it can help keep you very reliable throughout the game. Um, just help you find your buys faster, right? I mean, especially early in the game. I mean, it's expensive enough that buying this like early is not likely to... Um, what am I trying to say? you're not likely to be able to afford what you want and then still be able to buy this, but like it will definitely work with like peasant and page, right? You get to set those aside and play them. Hopefully, 
uh, I mean, the peasant is going to be the stronger one because it doesn't trigger a shuffle. So, like, if you can buy, if you get four on turn one, and you can buy deliver peasant, then on turn two, you can play the peasant. Um, you can buy, you know, the four cost that you would have bought the previous turn. You can even buy, you know, another peasant and buy deliver again for that matter. Um, but you, the, you know, you get the soldier going into the your, you know, into turn three, uh, which is really nice. There's gonna be other stuff like that. Um, you know, you buy, you, you you buy like a trasher. You buy um, like even like deliver rat catcher would be like pretty good, right? Because you trigger a shuffle that has um, two of your estates in it. Uh, you probably hit four. Like you you're not likely to to see the third estate right away. You probably hit four, so you can buy the you know whatever card you would have gotten turn one anyway, and then you, um, because you just triggered a shuffle, you're gonna see it like relatively quickly, and then like if you didn't, t you know if you did not hit the one in five or one in yeah one in five to see that that third estate, then um, you get you know you're gonna get to trash it the next turn with the rat catcher, and like rat catcher is not that exciting of a card to like accelerate that way. Um, so like you know you can imagine what some of the other possibilities might be if you have something more exciting. Now granted, uh, you know that in the turns one and two it's going to be rare that you have the opportunity to do that with anything more expensive than a three cost. Um, and then even going into the next shuffle, it's still going to be pretty hard to pull off. But um, you know as the game goes on, it's just going to get more affordable and. You know, arguably more powerful, although only in a hmm, like the the early using this early is going to be really high leverage, right? And that's the way in which, in, in a sense, it's more powerful early. But um, but obviously later in the game, like getting to put more step more stuff aside, getting to set better stuff aside, like is also very nice. So yeah, both of these avoid and deliver will seem quite good. We've seen peril. We have seen Rush Foray. Discard three cards, revealing them. If they have three different names, gain a loot. Uh, uh, I, hmm. I guess the closest thing this reminds me of is Quest. It was like a little mini game that you have to be able to beat in order to get the prize. Um, loot is a better prize than gold that Quest offers. I'm not sure whether which of them is like easier to do. Quest is, you know, quote unquote cheaper, but the condition might be harder to meet. Um, you're not going to be able to open with this uh, pretty much unless you have like, well, I guess something inherited or cursed gold um, would, would pretty much be the only ways. Like if you have, well, cursed gold and shelters specifically or another or heirloom maybe. Um, but... I mean, it could definitely be the case that you open with, you know, something relatively innocuous. I don't know, you know, a terminal silver of some kind. And then on turn three or four, you're looking at that and you're like, I drew like two estates and, a, and two coppers in my terminal silver. And I just, you know, don't really want a four. I wanted a five. And so you say, screw it. You just chuck like the estate, the copper, and the and the terminal silver, and you get your your loot. Um, like I could definitely see that happening. Um, I mean, it doesn't need to be a terminal silver; it could be a regular silver. But like, how often is this actually going to be good? Like, because the thing about discarding three cards is like you need you need to have enough like junk that you're not looking to play to be able to do it and you're paying three coins for it like that's kind of a lot like 
generally speaking, you'd rather be trashing those cards than discarding them. Um, if they're junk cards. And if they're action cards, you'd rather be playing the actions than discarding them. And you do have to hit three. Like So it's going to be hard, like I was saying, to do it early because you have... Um, you know, with a silver in your with with, cop, with just coppers in your deck, you just like can't do it. With silvers in your deck, you know, one silver is enough to do it, but you have to have, you know, you have your silver and your copper, and then the other three cards all have to be unique, which is again hard to do without shelters. Even with shelters, it's not that likely, right? You might have like. Uh, the silver, three coppers, and one shelter, and then that's not good enough. So, I don't know. I think this is on the weaker side. It is nice that it's like a loot gainer that doesn't require putting a card into your deck. Um, you can you can kind of like get to your buy phase and be like, oh gosh, I don't really have that much payload. Let me let me go on a foray. But still, uh, it seems weak to me. And we have launch, three cost event once per turn, return to your action phase, plus one card, plus one action, and plus one buy. Return to your action phase and play a market square. <laughs> um, well, that seems really good. I mean, it's, it's kind of just better than Villa, right? Like... Villa Villa gives you the buy. And it gives you two actions on top of... Well, you have to play the Villa to get the buy, but uh, it gives you two actions on top of the like return to your action phase action that you get. Um, but it doesn't give you a card. And it costs four, whereas this costs three. I mean, Villa will be better with cost reduction, but outside of that, um, Villa rebates the coin, um, so you effectively pay three for it, assuming you play the Villa, but you still have to have four coins. With this, you only need to have three coins. Um, you don't need to play anything to get the buy either, um, which isn't that often relevant usually when you buy the villa you just play the villa but sometimes you know you want to play it as a way or, or you want to trash it or something um of course i mean having the gain in that context can be better than not so that isn't necessarily an advantage to launch but it's it, it, it isn't you know on the other hand villa is a stop card right so um yeah i mean i feel like you're going to want to do this a lot uh same with Eugeneville a lot or cavalry um yeah this seems really strong uh i mean we, we have a pretty good idea at this point of what villa and cavalry are capable of which is everything <laughs> so i think i don't see any particular reason that launch wouldn't fall into a similar category um and compared to cavalry um i guess that that would be worth looking at as well um, cavalry gives you the buy back and it draws you two cards to this one's one and it gives you no actions where this is so it gives you one so essentially for a disc you get you know again you get a one coin discount ruling out cost reduction and then uh you exchange a card for an action which whether that's good or not is just going to depend on the board but you know it's got to be at least somewhat similar power level to cavalry i would think well i mean of course it doesn't have the on play effect but still most of what cavalry and villa are offering you is their on gain effect not their on play all right mirror three cost event plus some buy the next time you gain an action card this turn gain a copy of it oh well that's very straightforward <laughs> this is like a this is like stonemason right I mean, it depends on what you're buying. And compared to Stonemason, this does not make it cheap to empty cheap piles, which is probably good. Um, that's not, you know, in my mind, the more interesting aspect of playing with Stonemason. Um, 
But uh, if you're buying fives, like, hey, look, I've got eight coins and I'm going to buy a mirror and then I'm going to buy a five and I'm going to get two fives. Amazing. Um, you don't even need to buy the, the card. You can just gain it. So, like, if you... Um, well, of course, you have to buy this. So I was going to say if you get like a Horn of Plenty, but that, the order's wrong for that. Um, yeah. I wonder... I guess there is going to be... Is there ever going to be a situation where you gain an action that you can't gain a copy of um, or are you always going to be able to work around that thing like horse gainers you've got livery in play you should be able to say I want to resolve the mirror first or it should be reacting to the first action you gain so I would think that that would all just work the way you would want it to um, but yeah I mean this it's like a fairly straightforward discount thing um, I don't know I don't know that there's too much more nuance to it than that. Like, you know, but have fun getting two King's Courts for 10 bucks. Okay, so prepare we've seen at Scrounge. Three cost event. Choose one trash card from your hand or gain an estate from the trash. And if you did, gain a card costing up to five. Uh... Wait, this doesn't say that you can't trash an estate. <laughs> Get wrecked, enhance. <laughs> what? Costing up to five, too. Enhance can't even enhance estates into fives. This seems crazy. Am I missing something here? Trash a card from your hand. Gain a card costing up to five. You can just open double five with this. What the heck? I feel like I have to be missing something. This is too strong. Oh, I am missing something. <laughs> this, ah, the placement of the semicolon versus the comma. Okay. It's like, this can't be this strong. It's not. Okay. It's choose one, trash a card from your hand, or gain an estate from the trash, and if you did gain a card costing up to five. Right, so you can open with a five, um, although your opponent can snipe you, so that's awkward. <laughs> um, if they didn't snipe you, right, you would open trash estate, and then you would open scrounge, the estate back and get your five cost but you know what will actually happen is you scrounge the estate and then your opponent gains that estate in a five cost i mean maybe that's actually okay right like if they have to gain an estate to gain a five like that's pretty similar to have having to play curse gold to buy a five like it's not it's just going to depend on what the five is like, sometimes that's going to be okay, is I guess the way I should put it. Um, so, like, how often are you going to actually use this in the opening? Trashing one card. Not that exciting, right? Like, how often do you do a turn one or two banish? It does happen. Um, and banishes better in multiple ways it's more expensive granted but um the exile is is something right you you keep your points for the estate um more importantly it's not putting something into the trash that your opponent can use to gain a five cost um yeah there's really not like a good well i guess i mean the way around this is that you oh never mind that's not good at all Let's so say the way around is, is you have six coins and two buys, and you buy scrounge, and you trash an estate, and you buy scrounge again, you gain the estate, and you gain the five. Or you could have just bought the five. <laughs> so never mind. Um, 
well, I went from thinking like, oh my God, this card is completely busted to thinking, maybe this isn't very good. <laughs> uh, and it specifically has to be in the state. So like, that's pretty narrow. Uh, yeah, I think... Yeah, I think I'm leaning towards this is not, not very strong. Um, at the end of the game, it will be, I guess I should say. Like, for three coins, you can gain an estate from the trash, and then you can gain a duchy. <laughs> that's that's pretty good for scoring, for three coins. Really good, actually. Um, is that the most powerful usage of it? Maybe. Will it discourage you from trashing your estates? Maybe. Uh... I don't entirely know. I mean, because the thing is, like, gaining an estate with a five is is not what you want to be doing, but it, it could be worth it. Mm. All right, well, let's move on to the last row of, event, of events. Six cost, looting, gain a loot. Well, that's straightforward as it gets. Um... It's like buying a gold, except that it's a loot instead. Buying gold is usually not what you want to be doing. Buying loot for six is going to be what you want to be doing more often than buying gold is. Still probably not that great. Um, but, uh, you know, sometimes that's what you got to do to get some payload. Uh... I guess I will just say that I expect this to be a bit of a trap in that I expect to see people buying this because they hit six and they're like, ooh, loot, and then like loot is not the right card for their deck. Um, but it will more often be the right card for their deck than gold will be. So, you know, it'll still be, it'll definitely have its its uses. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't think this is like super strong or anything. I mean, it's pretty expensive there's uh you know i expect to if i want to be doing this anyway i would probably prefer to be getting a sack of loot and sack of loot i don't think is like super strong anyway all right finally we have invasion you may play an attack from your hand or 10 cost event, you may play an attack from your hand, gain a duchy, gain an action from onto your deck, gain a loot, play it. <laughs> okay. That's that's a lot of different kind of unrelated things. You may play an attack from your hand. So this is... Uh, I mean, this is definitely like intended to be like a thematic card, right? I don't know about the action onto your deck part, but like you're attacking someplace and you're taking... You're seizing the duchy and you're gaining the loot from the duchy. Um, you would play an attack from your hand is just like awfully specific. Like it's like a, it's a, I guess a village, but a very specific one. Like it comes in your buy phase after you've already played your money, right? So like any any draw you get from the, you that attack, any money you get from that attack, like is all going to be, well, no, I mean, I guess the money could still be useful if you have false buy. Yeah, so I take that back. But there's still going to be potential... Poten there's still potentially going to be a bunch of stuff that the card can do other than just the attack itself that is going to be rendered irrelevant at this point in your turn. Um, and, like, you have to have an attack. There has to be an attack on the board. There has to be an attack in your deck. And you have to not have the actions to play that attack. That part seems... You know, somewhat rare. Um, gain a duchy for 10 coins. This isn't really how you want to be scoring, but I guess, you know, if the conjunction of all these different things makes that worthwhile. But it's just kind of awkward because, you know, you're... Um, it's a lot of resources to invest. So like, the, I guess the maybe the way to put this is, you're paying 10 coins and you're not 
doing something like buying a province, which means you're probably not really looking to green exactly. Um, you know, I mean, I guess you are a little bit because you get the duchy, but like it, it doesn't. It seems more like a building type of move, except then it gives you a duchy, which is counterproductive for that. Um, gain an action onto your deck, like that part is, is of course, quite nice. Um, gain and play a loot. Oh, you are almost certainly going to get plus buy. Well, almost certainly is probably too strong. You're reasonably likely to get plus buy from the loot that you gain and play. So I guess the attack you play from your hand is giving you money. Like there's a good chance that even if you didn't have any buys, the loot will give you a buy and then you can spend that money. So that's, you know, that's cool. Um, but overall, this seems like a little bit too grab baggy to me to be like broadly useful. It's like, how often do you have an attack in your hand that you want to play during your buy phase? How often do you, are you going to have that and then you also want a touchy? Um, like, gain an action onto your deck and gain a loot and play it. Those are pretty, like, you're, you're going to be pretty happy with that, like, the vast majority of the time. But those other two things, and the playing an attack from your hand is probably never going to be bad. Um, but sometimes it's not going to do anything or it's going to be pretty marginal and the gain of duchy could be actively bad. So yeah, I think this is, as far as these 10 cost events go, right, we've got Populate, we've got Prosper, which we've looked at before, um, and then Invasion. I I think Invasion's got to be the worst of them just because it doesn't seem to have a lot of like self-synergy. Um, with Populate being the best of them. I mean, maybe there's other 10 cost events other than those three that I'm not thinking of, but... Oh, Alliance. Uh, well, I would say Alliance is... better than this. Uh, is it better than... It, Alliance Alliance might actually be better than Populate, to be honest. Uh, just because, like, it... Populate's a bit messy at doing what you wanted wanted to do and a bit sometimes a bit over costed for doing what you wanted to do alliance is like under costed for doing what you wanted to do and is like very good at doing that thing like it's it's a it's i mean it's it's still kind of like a sloppy mess card like just shove a whole bunch of stuff in your deck but like it's there's a consistency to it anyway um and then prosper Yeah, I'm thinking it goes like Alliance, Populate, Prosper, Invasion. So, um, I guess I'm coming down on saying I don't think Invasion is very good, very useful. Ten coins is a lot for such a kind of random assortment of things. All right, well... That is all of the cards and all of the traits and all of the events... What do we think overall? We think that I have figured out that this is a scroll bar. Amazing. <laughs> but aside from that, um, the I think, okay, looking at the events, the stars of the show for the most part are like the cheap ones. Uh, like Barry is, is, seems really good. Avoid and Deliver seem really good. Peril, meh. Not so much. Rush, I think, is quite good. Um, launch. Mirror is, like, straightforwardly good. Like, doesn't, you know, there's not a whole lot of complexity to that one. Um, I mean, I guess I didn't... One thing I didn't mention is that you can use Mirror, essentially, as plus buy, even if you are paying the same or more than you would for... Like, you're like, I want to two costs i have five coins you can i don't i only have one buy you can still mirror and buy the the two of them so like it's not just a discount thing it's also like potentially a source of gains that you might not otherwise have but either way uh, it is also the discount thing and it's you know like it's pretty straightforward um anyway prepare and journey you know both seem good um and then, like, 
you know, these three all seem like, eh. Um, so, yeah, like I said, this, the, the, the strength of the events definitely seems tilted towards the cheaper ones. Uh, the traits are... Um, you can't really rank them by power. You kind of rank them just by, like, craziness, I guess. Um, let's see. Inherited and Pious are definitely two of the crazy ones. This one's crazy in a very different way. This one's pretty crazy. Uh, I don't know. A lot of them are crazy. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I think they're, as a group, really cool uh it'll be fun to see how they mix games up and what like wildness occurs as they land on like particular piles and then the actual actions and treasures of the set no victory cards um the one that really stood out to me was definitely frigate that attack just seems so strong to me I don't know that that necessarily makes it the best card in the set though I wouldn't be surprised if it is but it's certainly like it's well okay I was going to say it's certainly got to be the most game warping but then I remembered shaman so shaman may well be more game warping kind of hard to say um nothing really jumps out to me in this set as like an S tier card outside of maybe Frigate. Um, like there's some strong cards for sure. But, you know, on the level of like Silk Merchant, King's Court, Recruiter, type stuff like I don't think there's really anything that gets that high up the rankings which is probably good um, to moderate the power level so yeah um, I think that's all I've got for plunder um, thanks for watching I'm looking forward to playing with the full set I haven't gotten the chance to do it yet but now that I've recorded this I can <laughs> do at some point um i probably will try to record some like plunder heavy games at some point but probably not until i'm back from my trip so i don't know when that'll actually be but in the meantime you know go check them out or check this out on dominion.games if you haven't already and thanks for watching until next time